on proper usage of corporate systems, then managing those systems as they're kind of bounced around between lots of people's, uh, people through kind of a high turnover rate. So we want to address some of those issues specifically with Office 365 and Windows Engine. And if you do have a question, please put a question up in the Q&A panel on the top of your live meeting console. And uh, if I don't see it, Alex will remind me, and I'll try to answer your question directly. So if you don't already know, Office 365 is a bundle from Microsoft of Office Professional Plus on the desktop, Exchange Online, which is your email server, SharePoint Online uh, for document collaboration and um, internal portal file sharing, and Microsoft Link. So Microsoft Link is similar to an instant messaging client, which you might be familiar with. Um, it allows you to not only chat back and forth between coworkers, it also gives you presence information to see when other users are online in your organization. And it will also let you do voice and video um, conversations between coworkers. But the upside to that is you know, reducing your cell phone books. Uh, and we saw that firsthand in our organization when we turned it on. There's a couple different flavors of Office 365. There is a version out there today which is free, and that really is Windows Live. Um, if you sign up for Windows Live, it's no gear for individuals. Uh, you get some Office web applications, so you can get Word and Excel uh, in a web format, uh, and some kind of ad-supported email usage. Now, if you want to step up, there's an Office 365 that's designed for small businesses. And it's really 25 users or less. And so that fits really nicely with some of our smaller nonprofit customers. In other cases, we have uh, larger nonprofit organizations. Uh, we've got one in particular with like 150 people. They really need some enterprise features. And Office 365 has you covered there. There's a version for enterprises specifically. Talking about the, the version for small businesses and professionals, less than 25 users, uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty sweet bundle of, of services. You get a 25 gigabyte mailbox. You get your online portal with SharePoint. You also get a website. Um, so you get a website with full content management um, using SharePoint as the, the web application, um, as well as Office web applications. So if you imagine you don't have all the Office tools installed on all the desktops, you can have users that actually use Word and Excel in a browser in your SharePoint site instead of having to install those on the desktop application. So a really nice cost savings for, for nonprofits. The retail price on that is six bucks a user per month. Nonprofits are less, and I'll show you that price sheet at the end of the presentation of, of kind of what we're getting for our nonprofit customers. Um, for the for those that need enterprise features, a lot of times there's questions of, well, you know, I have less than 25 users, but there's some things that I really want to have in our organization. Um, the enterprise version of Office 365 allows you to have something called Active Directory synchronization. And this is the way of having your security groups that are present on your network and manage those in the cloud or in your on-premise network directly. Um, some customers also need the ability to archive emails and be able to search those archives. Um, additional options are BlackBerry Enterprise Server um, or a higher level of support. Um, all of these are included as part of the Office 365 for Enterprises. When you break it down between the enterprise plans and the small business plans, um, the E1, E2, E3, and E4, those are all enterprise plans. Um, the big differentiation is um, if you go with a small business plan, you're basically going to hold, ha hand over all of your DNS registration directly to Microsoft. Um, if you go with an enterprise plan, then you're going to go to your, your GoDaddy or your Network Solutions account and point specific email servers or web servers to the Microsoft locations. Um, the small business plan um, also, it doesn't let you delegate lots of different people for different administrative roles in your organization. It assumes there's kind of one person in charge of everything. Um, and there's no directory synchronization with the small business plan. 
Um, support is purely community based. There's no 24 by 7 um, phone support for the small business plan. SharePoint, um, if you don't know, um, it's a great online pool and document collaboration tool. Um, there are some differences between the small business plan and, and the enterprise plans in that um, you don't get uh, kind of Microsoft's answer to, to little Facebook pages, which is my sites. Um, you also don't have the um, ability to create online forms or online Visio forms. <clears throat> And you can really just have one major SharePoint site collection, not 300 with the enterprise plan. Um, it's also not encrypted, so it's it's secure, but it's not um, encrypted, encrypted over SSL. Um, so there's some, some differences there between those two points. From an email point of view, I already mentioned this, but there's no single sign-on support for the small business plan, and there is support for that in the enterprise plans. Um, Support is also based on community kind of blogs and, and actually really, really nice community support um, that are manned by Microsoft support personnel. You just can't pick up the phone and call them. Now, real quick, I want to mention something called Windows Engine. Um, one of the other big problems that we see with nonprofits is um, since the employee base either has a high turnover or you have a lot of volunteers, there's a lot of problems with you know, how many machines do we have out there? Um, well, we have a bunch of different Um, you can provide remote assistance and log in and see what's going on on these computers. And then always have inventory hard uh, list of kind of hardware and software. Now, some of our customers, uh, they do have a dedicated IT person. Um, that kind of uses Windows Engine to manage their own inventory. Some of our nonprofit customers um, come to Eastridge for something like managed services, where they say, look, Eastridge wants you to monitor all of our equipment. We want you to do the virus protection, and we want you to be our help desk. Um, why don't you guys use Windows Engine to facilitate that? And we do. Um, it makes for a very easy way for us to help our nonprofit customers. And, of course, setting security policies is the one I missed there. Um, you know, the, the big the big kind of strategic drivers for Windows Intune is making security easy um, and helping kind of grease the skids as far as productivity is catching these viruses and catching these update issues before they actually stop you and, and halt productivity. I can't tell you how many times we've had to go into a nonprofit and they were just completely down because you know, somebody's computer was infected with a virus and that happened to be the person who was going to be running payroll or you know, some other critical activity for the organization. Um, there's also some, some legal compliance factors that um, drive adoption of Windows and Tune around uh, being able to report to your, to your um, board of directors, hey, here's everything we have, here's the licenses we have, here's all the hardware that we have out there right now. All right, now this is an eye chart. And, and I hope you guys can see this, but I, I just want to give an illustration of when we apply for nonprofit pricing from Microsoft, um, there's a couple things. There's, there's a little spreadsheet that we need to fill out, um, and we also need a copy of your 501c3 um, certification. 
uh, Microsoft takes this information and they will either approve or deny uh, your nonprofit pricing. But typically we've seen um, anywhere from 50 to 60 percent off retail pricing for some of these um, units. So we see here Office 365 E1 plan, this price is 10 bucks. Um, one of our nonprofit customers, we managed to get them $4, uh, which is about 60% off list price. At the very bottom of that list, you can see Microsoft Windows Engine. Um, that's $11 a month retail. Uh, so that comes out, they, they've discounted that at a 50% rate, and I'm not sure why, um, but that's, that's where it is today. Uh, Sorry about that. Travis seems to be having a few mic issues. Bear with us just a few more minutes. Hey, Alex, can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Back on. <laughs> I am so sorry. So, Alex, you were listening. Um, when exactly did you lose the audio from me? How far do I need to back up here? You were reviewing the example. Okay, so yeah, I was just going through the example here of um, the, the nonprofit pricing. And I think probably where I got, uh, where the audio cut off is I was explaining the process. Uh, when we sign up customers um, for nonprofit status, even when they get it, the first bill that they get from Microsoft, it's going to share the full retail price. Um, after two, sometimes it takes three months, um, they will see an amended pricing structure reflecting the nonprofit price pricing and a credit for any overpayments they've made while they were paying retail pricing. So it's not a super speedy process, but 
it's a great discount, um, and it works pretty well once it's uh, once we have all the paperwork into Microsoft, and and that's we can help our nonprofit customers actually get that going. I don't see any questions. Or about at the end of the short webinar. Um, hope that was good information on Office 365 and what it's into, and really pricing and how those things work. Um, if there are any questions, please fire us up here in the Q&A section.